y'all doing out there? This is Pete over at DIY Auto School and we're still working on our Chevelle, our 68 Chevelle. And what we did, we just finished up on the doors and we just got done putting all the moldings in, all the chrome trim. We got done putting the kicker panels in. You can see that's in right there. The threshold moldings and all of the wind lace is installed along with the air vents and uh, everything else that goes on the door opening itself. So we're done with those. And now it's time to move down the line and we're going to start putting everything on the back of the car. Now we've already put the two moldings on the back. There's two moldings that go across the uh, tail light panel. We've already installed those. So what we're going to do now, we're going to start putting the tail lights theirself on. And where that starts is right here with our tail light quarter panel extensions. Now I painted these with the car and what I did is I hung them up, I painted them, I did all the bodywork painted them. And, and they came out beautiful but uh, what we're doing right now is inside right here and this is a common situation on these muscle cars is they got these uh, quarter panel extensions I'm going to show you what that looks like Mustangs have them, uh, Mopars have them, Chevys have them, Buicks you know the, the, the whole nine yards it's, uh, uh, it's a situation that says hey it's a pot metal uh, pot metal day today and it's time to detail these out and get these fucking cocksuckers done. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. Initially, from the factory, inside the uh, quarter panel extension, tail light extension, whatever you want to call it, housing, these are painted silver. But it's really hard to tape that off. And most of the time when you're painting these extensions, the silver paint inside is already wasted anyway. It's, it's faded out. It's filthy, dirty, this, that, and the other. So what I do, I go ahead and clean it up real good, uh, scuff it down with a scotch Brite, and I just paint the whole thing inside and out. And then I come back and spray the inside silver. That's going to give it that nice high-tech brand new look. It's going to give it a nice bright silver behind it so the lights will be brighter. All right. So if you're going to paint these and you're going to paint them like I did, always remember that the inside of these have to be painted silver because that light is going to reflect off that silver paint and it's going to make your tail lights a lot brighter. If, you, if I put these together just like you're looking at right here, the tail lights would be dim. You wouldn't be able to see them 100 feet away, 200 feet away and it could cause an accident. So what I do is I get this paint right here. This is a very, very uh, high gloss fucking chrome paint. Uh, you can buy this at your local hardware store or automotive supply store. Very cheap and inexpensive. I think it's like four or five bucks. And it's uh, chrome. I'm sure everybody's seen this. It's chrome paint. And what we want to do is apply three to four wet coats of this onto uh, the inside of our housing. Now the thing that you want to be careful of is that first coat that you apply has to be a dust coat. And the reason is, is because this paint right here will react with that paint and make it bubble, peel, and crinkle. Alright, you're going to get a reaction. So we want to go ahead and be very careful. Another thing is, I don't know if you see in the background here, I got this hood and deck lid covered. You want to make sure that anything that you don't want this paint to get on be covered because this stuff here gets everywhere. So what we're going to do is detail these out. Remember that word. Remember that word detail when you're putting your car back together. Attention to detail. All right. Your, your eye won't see it, but your mind will. Do you see what I'm saying? And this is a situation that says we're paying attention to detail, but we're also being safe in the long run because it's going to make our taillights a lot brighter by painting the inside of our buckets instead of leaving them blue. 
So we're just going to take our spray paint and we're just going to dust the coat on it just like this. And then we'll come over here and do the same thing. And if you work your spray can properly, you can continue to spray it because it'll be drying as you're spraying it. If you, if you put it on too wet, then what you're going to do, you're going to get a lot of runs in it, you're going to get a lot of sags, it's going to take forever to dry. But if you put real thin coats on it and build it up to the magnitude of a full wet coat, then it's going to be dry and you can keep working. So once again, we're just going to take our spray can, just like you see here, and I'm just dabbing the paint in there and spraying it with nice thin layer coats of paint, being very careful not to get runs or put it on too thick. And one more thing, don't be fooled. Um, this paint is not going to look like chrome, but it is the brightest silver that you can buy. You can actually buy some industrial silver or engine paint silver and do the same thing. But it's not going to give it that iridescent, uh, you know, glowing silver look that you would get with this type of paint. And then, once we're done painting that, you can see what kind of finish you're going to get by applying that silver paint to your taillight extension bucket. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, that's going to give us a nice, super bright light and it's going to be able to be seen from very, very far away by the reflection of our nice silver bucket um, back to original just like it was. This is attention to detail. Your eyeball isn't going to see it, but your mind will. When the guy hits the brakes, you're going to say, wow, that son of a bitch has got some bright fucking lights. paper off one of them. We'll go ahead and look at it. I'm sure it's dry enough. You can already see what the difference is just by what I've done here. Uh, that's really going to make this car stand out to be a show car. Um, we're not even really trying to make this out to be a show car to be honest with you. Um, this is just a common everyday type of paint job that my friend Pete does. Uh, because I believe that people should get their money's worth when they invest money in uh, doing a job like this. And, you know, I mean, it's right here, and it's, it's, it's something that says, man, why should I skip on that? Even if the customer doesn't really, uh, you know, believe in paying for it, I'm not going to skip on making it uh, the perfect piece that I can do, because that's what I am, see? I take pride in everything I do, and I work my ass off to fucking make sure that my customer is satisfied. So that really, really looks nice. It looks better than factory new almost, and it's going to be a nice piece once we get it all together. We're never going to see that, but you know what? We already know that it's done right, and the customer is going to love it. Let me get all these together. I'm going to mount them on the car, and then we go into the bumper, which is going to be a bitch because I'm here by myself. Hello, are you still fucking awake out there or am I boring you yet? If I'm boring you, go somewhere else. I don't give a fuck. There's people out there that want to fucking know about this shit and if you're one of them that doesn't, get the fuck out, bitch. I got to get to work. Uh, it's late. It's past 6 o'clock already on Wednesday night and uh, we're going to get her done. Take it easy. My friend Pete, your friend Pete. Building the car doing a good job doing it, taking pride in what I do, and making sure that I'm satisfied with it before the customer's satisfied with it. We'll see you later.
I got the back end together and I got all the tail lights in and all the chrome is on and all the marker lights are put back together what I'm doing before I install the rear bumper is I am pour 15 the bottom of the gas tank and everywhere that I missed when I pour 15 it previously um, I went ahead and pour 15 up here before I painted this area it had a lot of surface rust on it so I went ahead and put a coat of pour 15 on the top of that and then painted over that so now what I'm doing is I'm pour 15 in the bottom of the uh, back end of the car because it had some heavy surface rust and this is called attention to detail and also giving it that protective coating that it deserves being a classic muscle car that it is and survived this many years without rotting apart and falling apart so we're trying to preserve the automobile that we're working on by applying the pour 15 now the way that I'm doing it you can see right here I'm using a brush all right and that's how I apply pour 15 I uh, put it on a brush and I brush it on if you spray this it can be a very very messy job and what will happen is that you'll waste most of it spraying it in the air so putting the pour 15 on with a brush is a lot better choice than spraying it and I'm trying to get every single angle of everywhere that I can and being careful at the same time when you're applying pour 15 it's very important that um, you don't get any of that on your skin you just got to be really careful not to get it on you now when you do this you also another thing is you want to wear some clothes that you really don't give a fuck about because it will get on your clothes it's going to get on your clothes and there's nothing you can do about it but buck it up and save it. Now we also see that our exhaust pipe right here uh, has overspray on it. We'll go ahead and clean that off later and possibly put some high temp uh, aluminum silver paint on that just for detail looks only. Uh, more than likely the heat from the exhaust will eventually burn that off but uh, for delivery purposes we'll go ahead and put some aluminum paint on this uh, just to clean it up so when you're standing back 10 feet it won't look like a cheesy paint job. And then of course while we got our pour 15 out what we're going to do is we will paint the frame rail black on the sides of the car where we got overspray on it and that's basically just for cosmetic purposes that's just a cosmetic thing there that's really nothing to say that it's going to protect it it will protect it but the main reason I'm doing it is for cosmetic purposes so when you look at the car we're do using that word once again attention to detail so always do the best you can do and have the best attitude toward what you are doing in life not just working on a fucking car but basically anything that has to do with anything that you're doing it's always nice to be proud of what you do now up in this area right here this is a common place right here where uh, these rot out all right water and debris gets stuck down in here and it uh, uh, gathers up in there and then what happens is moisture gets in there so what we're going to do to protect that we are going to go ahead and spray that with pour 15 I'm sorry brush brush it with pour 15 and this will protect it forever and we're not going to go too high on that we're just going to go up a little about four or five inches in and what that's going to do is protect that so if leaves and debris and dirt get down inside here that area of the rocker and what have you will be protected 
All right, so now that we're done pour 15 in the car and making it look better, we still got to do a little bit more detailing, like in the rear fender wells. We'll go ahead and spray some 3M undercoating in those to uh, clean them up and make them look well. Another thing that I'm going to do for the owner is since he put brand new inner fender wells in and it's got that real nice clean look to it, you can see over here this one's real nice. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and paint the top of his core support and his radiator cover right here. And then over in this area, before we put all the fenders and stuff on, I'll go ahead and paint that black as well. And what that'll do, that'll give it a nice, clean, brand new look to uh, accommodate his inner fender wells. And when you open the hood, it'll really, really look nice. So it's a situation that says, hey man, I, I want to I be proud of what I'm doing. And I want to I be proud that, you know, I'm doing a good job. Not for everybody else to look at and to sit around so I can brag but to give myself confidence that will tell me, hey, I I'm fucking doing it, man. I'm, I'm fucking doing it, and I'm doing it right, and, and I don't give a fuck what people think. If they find a little nitpick spot in my car, or if they want to look at it and say, oh, you should have done this and you should have done that, you know what I got to say for those fuckers? Fuck you. You should fucking do this then, bitch. Quit fucking looking at my shit, telling me what the fuck's going on when you ain't done nothing, motherfucker. finished out the rear end of the car. I got the trunk lid uh, molding on, the, the, the rear seal, you can see that right there. And then I went ahead and installed the tail lights. I showed you how to paint those silver inside and when the brakes are hit on this they'll uh, really, really be bright. But look how clean that looks. I got to put the SS emblem on and then we'll be done with the back end. It just gives it a nice, beautiful, clean look when you really, really take yourself to the stride to uh, be that guy that wants to go the extra mile on the attention to detail. So when I get ready to start color sanding and buffing the doors and the fenders, I'm going to be back to show you a quick little session of color sanding and buffing. And then we're going to move down the line. We're almost done with this car. It's looking really, really nice. And uh, I hope you're enjoying this. I hope that you're learning something from it. And I hope that this video set is telling you to get off your fucking ass, be somebody in life, and not a fucking couch potato or a YouTube watcher. Don't sit around all day playing on your fucking computer watching YouTube videos just because you don't have nothing to fucking do. Watch a YouTube video to learn from. Watch a YouTube video to, to guide you through fucking life. Alright, if you're getting on there to watch cartoons and just lame brain stupid fucking shit that doesn't make no sense, you're wasting your fucking life, dude. You're wasting your life away and you're the only one that can be blamed for feeling sorry for yourself. Do you understand what I'm saying? Quit feeling sorry for yourself. Quit telling yourself, I can't do that, I wish I could, because you know what? You can. You might fuck up along the way. You might stick it in your own fucking ass more than once, and it's probably gonna hurt. But in the end, you're gonna be proud of what the fuck you did, because you did it all by yourself, without mommy and daddy holding your hand. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, getting back on the Chevelle, and doing a hell of a fucking job all by myself. We started out with a couple helpers over here. We started out with uh, uh, a guy named Dylan, Mr. Clown Hat. We started out with Mr. Clown Hat fucking sanding the car and taking parts off. We, 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 we got into the middle of it with another guy named Dylan that didn't fucking work out over here because they don't want to work. They don't want to do nothing. They just want money. They want a paycheck and they want a check that says, hey, 
I'm worth this. No, you're not, motherfucker. That's why you don't work here no more. Because my friend Pete is the guy that says, I don't need your fucking help. I can do this by myself, and it will be done by myself. So watch, listen, and learn, and you too can do it by yourself. We'll see you later. Take it easy. My friend Pete, your friend Pete, everybody's friend Pete, over here at SWRC Southwest Rod Custom, Dallas, Texas, showing you how to get off your fucking ass and be your own fucking person. All right, how y'all doing out there? This is Pete over at uh, DIY Auto School. We're still in the process of detailing our car out before we go ahead and put the fenders, the hood, and the front cowling on. Uh, I went ahead and pour 15 the bottom. You saw that. So now what I'm going to do is up on the top cowling and then, of course, the radiator support there. I want to detail that out and make it look really, really nice for the owner so when he opens the hood up, it's going to look really, really nice. So before we detail anything out, what I did is I went ahead and took a red scotch bright, just like you see right here, and I went ahead and scotch bright at the top of the car. Now, we're not going to uh, paint the fan shroud because that's plastic. And of course, that always has a plastic look, so we want to keep that alone. But what we're going to do is we're going to take some two-inch tape here, and just to protect it on the edge, we'll go ahead and tape that off. And it doesn't have to be real fancy, because when we spray this, we're going to spray real close and uh, make it look really, really nice. We're going to go real fast, real close, and uh, make it look nice. Now up here, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing up on the upper cowling. What I'm going to do to protect everything as I'm spraying, I'm going to use a piece of cardboard. Now what that cardboard's going to do, that's going to keep me from getting overspray on the battery, uh, possibly the radiator, and anywhere that I don't want overspray to get. And this is just a detail situation, that's all it is, it's called attention to detail. And we're just making it look nice to accommodate our brand new paint job. Because if you remember correctly, I went ahead and painted the inside of the hood. So when you open that hood up, and then you see everything brand new on the top of the hood, and then you look inside here and everything looks kind of tacky, it's going to be kind of oddball. Now this is a, a glossy, semi-gloss paint, I guess, um, that I'm using. And it is a gloss protective enamel. Uh, something that you can buy at your local hardware store. That can of paint probably costs about four dollars. And I'm going to use my cardboard just like you see, and then I'm just going to touch paint it. And when I say touch paint it, I'm talking about I'm not going to use a uh, full. Do you see what I'm saying here? Look what I'm doing here. Bam, bam, bam. That's how I'm painting it as I'm moving it. I'm not going to use a long stroke. And then we're just going to keep on going. Just a touch and tap type paint. Okay, we're going to overlap our paint as we spray. And then of course we'll come up here do the same thing. And once again, I do have the car taped off with plastic, so overspray will not get on the car. And now, you can see, it looks really fucking nice. I'm going to go ahead and repeat my process probably twice. Put a nice good coat on that, and I'll check the front end of the car as well, and uh, go ahead and spot paint that. I'm going to show you, this is what I call spot painting, is when you just tap it like that. Do you see what I'm saying? See how I'm painting that right there? I'm just doing little spurts of paint, but I'm following and keeping the dryness. I'm taking the dry out of the paint as I'm painting it. All right, here's a little situation we got right here. Um, we're still into the attention to detail situation because there's a lot of stuff under your eye isn't going to catch, but your mind will. It's kind of like subliminal messages that uh, TV networks put out to you 
to buy their products and also to promote products that they believe in. Uh, we won't get into that. That's a cork video fucking situation. C-O-R-C, Cusarama Cafe over on my other channel called S-W-R-N-C Pete. One word. All right, one word just like that, S-W-R-N-C Pete, YouTube channel. Go over there and we'll talk about all that later. But right now, what we're talking about is attention to detail. Now, the owner requested that I paint his hood hinges to the factory color, which is gray. So since these are factory original hinges, and also the hood's factory original, and everything's factory original and never been torn apart, if you look right there, you can see the mark where the hood hinge goes on the fender. We don't want to lose those marks. We don't want to lose those marks because that is exactly, precisely how it was from the factory and the hood shut perfect on this car. So what I'm going to do is I've already scotch brighted these down and cleaned them up the best possible way without sandblasting, which we're not going to fucking do that because we're just basically detailing this, is I'm going to take some two inch tape and I'm going to cover that mark right there. Um, if you look real close again, you can see where the bolt lays and that's on both sides, all right? Because to adjust this hood to get it to where it sits perfect and, and, and it rides perfect and closes perfect, it takes hours, hours. You got this adjustment here, and then also you got this adjustment here, all right? And then you also have your hood latch that adjusts as well. So, you know, we're trying to do this in a quick manner fashion, uh, and that's why I'm here. I'm here to take my brain cells and, and scatter them across the World Wide Web so you can get the tech tips and helpful hints that you fucking need to get her done right. So basically what I did, I went ahead and took a scotch brite, cleaned everything up really nice, and I stayed away from our uh, bolt pattern there, all right? And uh, what we're going to do is we are going to take some two-inch tape just like this, and then we will cover that just like that because we want to leave that perfection in there, all right? We want to leave the, in, the uh, pre preferred fucking bolt pattern in our hinge. Now, the thing that we're going to do here, let me get this other one while we're talking. And you can see that this was the factory color right here. It was a gray. So I went and got me some gray spray paint, engine paint. And um, here's a good example. You can see that this hinge here has a different setting. You can see that this one's actually moved down and in the middle closer than the other one. So um, it's important if you are using the original parts and you want it to all work the best to uh, do what my friend Pete's telling you to do here and follow my fucking lead. All right, so what we got here, we got our hinges uh, taped off where the bolts go. And what we'll do is we'll spray paint these just like that. And then we'll come back later with our gray paint just like this right here. This is engine paint. And we'll go ahead and remove the top just like that. And then we'll take our spray paint sprayed inside our cap using that as a cup. And then once that's done, we can go ahead and take a touch-up brush such as this right here, a cheap, inexpensive touch-up brush, and then go ahead and paint that once it's bolted on. Now, you're asking yourself, well, you're going to paint the bolts with it. I thought we were, like, being detailed here. Yes, I am. The situation is, is once you get those bolts set in place and your hinges are set, you can take one bolt out individually while the other one is still in there, paint it, and then put the bolt back on there. And then you'll never know that uh, this was uh, ever removed because it'll have the original bolts, it'll be painted brand new, and it'll look brand fucking new. So let me get those painted. We'll go ahead and detail them out, make them look really, really nice, and uh, hopefully the owner is going to be really, really proud of the job that I'm doing for him. Um, this is a normal thing around here that I take my time and I detail stuff out and I make it look good. I go beyond the money situation. I go beyond whatever the customer's paying me because I want to make sure that he's a satisfied customer. Um, I think I talked about this before that you can't please everybody. If you try to please everybody in the world, you're going to defeat your purpose and the people that aren't pleased with the work you're doing for the money that you, they are paying you, you can tell them to go fuck their self and stick their car or whatever you're working on in their fucking ass and go to sleep at night knowing that you did the job that was paid to be done. Uh, let me get these painted. I'm going to use the enamel uh, engine paint. You can see it back there. 
and then once we get that done, they'll be ready to hang, touch up, put the bolts on, and wham, 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 we're fucking done. We'll be back.